put no waste, and then it became zero waste. So I went over there in 1995. I went to Canberra. Uh, they had a plan for a huge um, zero waste transfer facility, really, that was very weird. It was all in, it was like a big, huge bunch of bullseyes, concentric circles. It was mostly made with that in mind. It wasn't really made with practical practicality in mind. Uh, but there was an earlier design done by a company called Revolve, which was already out at the landfill, doing basically what we do. And it was very similar to what the way we think about things. It had grouped things together into various different categories. So anyway, I went there and I told them the 12 categories. They were a bunch of bureaucrats who really weren't out there very much. And they thought that this was really the way to go. So th for the next five or six years, I was over there every year back and forth, back and forth to Australia and New Zealand. I ended up going to New Zealand a lot. And I brought back the idea of zero waste from there. And it went on the internet Specifically, he brought back, back a document with a government name on the front of the document. Yes. It was a plan, no waste by 2010. And it had a governmental agency stamp on it. So we'd been talking about total recycling. You don't have to waste anything. and our colleagues in the recycling field said, oh, are they saying that again? And then he came back with this document that had a government name on the front. Made it official. Made it official. And it, it gave just, him cover. It, it just, gave him it cover. It gave him cover, and it just spread nationally like wildfire. Within a year, Within zero a year, waste. there were zero waste websites CRA all over the place. Had a zero it waste just went conference. completely crazy. Yeah. After that. So all of a sudden it's permission to think that way because a government agency had done it instead of the wild and woolly activists. Mm hmm Yeah. So how do you okay. think um, the different sectors out there in our public, okay, government, obviously, and then the general public, and then industry and business. I mean, are you well frequented by businesses? Do businesses shop here? Well, of Everybody course. shops here. Yes. Agencies shop here. Television studios shop here. The guys movie on studios, uh, movie yeah. studios oh gosh, love yeah. it. Disney the props departments. Comes here. Oh gee. Yeah, Disney shops here um, when they're making movies in the area. Um, the discover who's who are the guys uh, that do all the destructo stuff. Uh, Oh, the Mythbusters. The Mythbusters. Oh, the Mythbusters. The, Mythbusters. Myth, the DIYers. Love us. DIYers love us. Yes, the Do it DIYers and the myth, yeah. Mythbusters have actually featured us on one of their segments because oh. they get their stuff here that they blow up or do whatever they yeah. do to it. Cool. Uh, yeah, lots of everybody shops here. P matrons from the hills who are looking for treasures. We sold... Restaurants. Last week, we messed up. And this is one of the fabulous tales that customers can tell. And we're sort of sorry, but it is a fabulous tale from a customer's perspective. We had a Raggedy Ann doll, and it was an original. And we had somebody pricing who didn't really understand and didn't look it up on the Internet. We do lots of research on the Internet, but didn't look it up. Sold it for 20 bucks. Turns out it was worth thousands. Oh. So somebody got a very good deal. So Antiques Roadshow will probably Antiques feature. Antiques Roadshow, <laughs> yeah. And it'll become lore among, you know. American Pickers, they may right. be here. Yeah, 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 yeah that kind might, of thing happens. Uh, it does happen, not so much as it used to. Yeah. Uh, we're very savvy about our pricing. So have you had difficulty um, at any time dealing with the city fathers and mothers and the powers that be as far as getting permits or siting and do they do they support you? Do they argue Sometimes. against what you're attempting to do? They don't argue against what we're attempting to do, whether they support us. Uh, sometimes they support us and they have, we have been declared a Berkeley treasure. And other times they try to put us out of business because we do tend to speak up in public about what we think. And some administrations like what we say, and other administrations disagree. Uh, and um, we have been here 30 years, and they tend to rotate. So oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> every two to four years, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah they think yeah. in those bites, so, huh? Yeah. So, but, they, but everybody actually likes our business. They like our, and they like our impact. Our, our financial impact on the community is huge. Mm -hmm. Last year, we spent over $130,000, real money and put it into people's hands, buying stuff. Well, that's $130,000 into the hands of the community. How many businesses do that? Mm -hmm. You know, And on the reverse side, we offer high-quality, low-cost, durable goods. If it's not durable, it never makes it here. 
So it's durable goods. We sell it to people who can raise their standard of living or fix up their historic home or their old house. Or You know, students can do stuff. Artists can buy rusty metal and mm -hmm. of the shiny stuff and make their sculptures. And People love us. It's just that sometimes the, pol uh, the political folk uh, um, aren't as happy with our message, which we do tend to uh, say. So stepping out of your urban ore role for just a second, what would you advise to businesses who wanted to do zero waste measures at their own business? Well, it's pretty close to possible for most businesses to hit that goal, um, depending on what you're getting rid of. But I mean, one of the things you have to do is just make sure you understand what you're getting rid of and categorize it by the categories that are suitable for whatever you, system you might have around for recycling. And the and corollary? Sure then that how that gets to, you have to make sure that the stuff gets to the place where it gets recycled too. The corollary? And sustainability thinking begins when you purchase. That's what I was just going to say would be to watch you what you know, purchase you in you the watch first place. You, purchase, you watch your whole supply line. You know, you watch the supply chain, you watch where, you know, are you buying things that are made out of recycled uh, materials? Can the material be recycled? You know, you see these, oh, we're all the, this is made from 100% recycled something or plastics usually, but is it itself recyclable? Well, no. So you've gotten one more cycle out of it, but is that really sustainable? No. It's a little better, but not, you wouldn't want to brag. So you, you think when you're doing your procurement, you think in product design, you think in, you just start thinking about it and factor it in just the way you would money. Mm -hmm. How much is it going to cost me overall for a life cycle thing? Well, how much is it going to cost the earth mm -hmm. overall for yeah. the life cycle thing? Too often the price tag yeah. we see doesn't reflect the real cost. Yeah. You know, in, in, in a business viewpoint too, you paid for it coming in the door. Why you would you want to pay it. for it going out the door? Exactly. Golly, yes. I hate to say it, but I think we're going to have to pick up Nancy pretty soon. She likes to eat early. Yeah, she does. What about um, government? One last question. What yeah. about government? What can government do um, at any level, local or state or federal? What could government do to support the zero waste movement? Youth, go ahead. Uh, if they would put their... Get out of the way? <laughs> no, 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 no. Not get out of the way. Government is a perfect place to oversee and coordinate all of the functions that happen in a community about recovering its resources. It's right. a community's resources and if the governments, instead of putting the resources in the hands of people who are trained to waste them and whose mentality is about wasting and oh if we save a nickel over here the 95 cents we threw in the hole in the ground is okay because look we saved a nickel aren't we heroic. No. You know, it's a dollar. What are you going to do to make it two? You know, and instead of giving it to wasting managers, give it to resource development managers who are economic developers and who look at it as, it's incoming resources, how can we maximize the value for the community and how can we maximize the value for manufacturing, you know, create jobs doing the sorting and classifying and making it into new stuff. It's domestic manufacturing. It's pollution prevention. It's wealth coming into the city. All these discarded resources are wealth there's jobs. coming into the city. That's what you're saying, is there's you jobs. Could, there's lots of jobs. Well, there's and lots way of jobs. jobs and what they need to do, wasting. what government needs to do is build 12 category resource recovery parks. Mm -hmm. And they, uh, and they sh need to be set up right so that they put uh, reuse first, recycling second, composting third, and wasting at the last. They need to be set up like airports. You think of what your discards are like suitcases and you're going to the airport now with all your suitcases and you have two, two or three different people in the car each going to a different airline. And you stop here and you get rid of Delta and then you go here and you get rid of American stuff and then you go here and you get rid of United stuff. That's the way this thing should work. It should be a bunch of different turnouts and you get rid of all these different things in a source separated way so that they're organized and clean instead of being mixed up. Mm -hmm. And uh, and let the, the let the collectors go out.